to uh, turn our attention back uh, to the rugby now. Anna Cape Liss, good morning to you. Well, how are things? How are you keeping? Good now, good. Here, here uh, we are um, again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a big come down after the snooker last night, but you look, here we are this morning again. Are you a snooker fan, are you? Well, we'd have the snooker on here a lot, yeah. yeah, yeah. You should have outed yourself on this a lot earlier, when, particularly when Shane Hannah was in the studio, because... You know, you'd be uh, you'd be preaching to the choir there. Less so with me, anyway. I think anyone who's still in snooker, like you can judge him or her very favourably in terms of character because they haven't been taken over by a terrible attention span in the mobile phone era, where you can actually watch a snooker mm. match. Um, and obviously, yeah, we have another one. <laughs> I very much enjoy it. I used to watch it when I was younger. Like we'd always have it on here. My aunt used to watch it a lot. So. Uh, yeah, I just and you know when you get to know the names and stuff like that. So, but a few big names out of the first rounds of the of the tournament so far. So, who uh, wins? Have to learn some new names. Who do you think Pardon? wins? I have no idea. The rocket. <laughs> mm. I have no idea. I just I just uh, recognize the names. I don't even. I need to. I need to learn a bit more. I learn a bit more, and you can ask me. You can exactly. Ask me the same well, Chen is in the next time. We'll be he'll be back next week. We'll uh, we'll get into Nerging it. out in the snooker. Love it. Someone much more calming. We've delayed uh, delayed the inevitable. Uh, we can delay the inevitable no longer here, Anna. Uh, where do you want to jump in? Oh, I don't know. I think it's been like a tough week. It's funny because um, you know this is the first tournament where they've gone a block of two games, a weekend off, and a block of three games. So this is the first you know, change that usually this would have been a weekend off. So I don't know how that might have affected things in terms of like preparation for the team. Is it just kind of prolonging the build up? Because this has been a, a a rocky build up, like lots of speculation about, you know, record scores and 100 points. And um, the players are obviously just trying to focus on themselves. Um it's a, uh, and you know, when you see the, the teams come out and, you know, everyone's reacting to like, wow, England aren't taking it easy anyway. And, you know, kind of funny, funny comments like that, which number one, you wouldn't expect them to. Number two, I think they have put in a few changes of, of girls who want to get starts, like um, to, to give some girls returning from injury and stuff, some good game time as well. So I think maybe you could argue that they've kind of taken taken you know changed it up for Ireland where they might not have against other teams mm. but um oh I, I I don't know I think um again <laughs> again the the amount of speculation it, it's what we do in sport but when the when the the gap between Ireland and Wales was kind of surprisingly big in in terms of performance and and then and then the scoreline you know early in the tournament and then Wales went on to absolutely smash Wales last week. I think it's understandable that it's daunting. Yeah. And I think I just, it's, I'm going to do the same as I, I, I do every week and just support the girls and they're going to do the same as they do, which is just prepare as best they can, show up as best they can and, and do everything in their power to just, to, to keep this, you know, as, as kind of low key in terms of uh, scoreline and then lift their own performance as much as they can. That, that's an awful kind of reality to, mindset as well. Like, what do you do in the dressing room before that? And because as a player, um, it's almost like it's almost like taking on a prison sentence where it's like, I just have to do this, get it over with. Yeah, I don't think it's ever, certainly for me and throughout my career, we were always the step behind England because they had turned pr that professional corner kind of just as I was coming into the Irish squad, really, and they'd already started to kind of push the gap with um, kind of, they'd gone semi-pro and then they'd gone pro going into a World Cup. And then they had, so they also, they also had very rocky periods leading into their professional, you know, setup. And so this isn't unique to Ireland. Like everyone's going to have like the things that they learn and stuff. It's just, a, it's really hard for Ireland to learn this now when everyone else is so far ahead. But in terms of like preparing for the game, do you know, and I, and I read, like, uh, they think they think they can win, or at least I've, I've heard that, I've seen that, like, you have to actually believe that. And, like, you know, reading um, quotes from, like, Dorothy Wall was just saying, you know, they're 15 people and we're 15 people. And we're, that's how we're approaching this, like, previous scores, everything else. Uh, you just have to... Um, 
you have to believe that. And actually, I remember Joe Schmidt came into us before the World Cup in 2017 and he talked to us about how Ireland would have prepared for playing the All Blacks and he said you know they'd talk about the players kind of personally and talk about um, you know that they're not like infallible was the word he used and that um, they can also have a very bad day that's how I always thought about it I was like I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I play my best that's my responsibility obviously all of the girls in the squad are going to be thinking that way they're also going to believe that you know, a team as good as England, like if you can get in their heads a little bit, that that'll affect them more than, that that will affect them a lot because they're so used to performing well and clicking really well. So that's what they're going, that's how they're going to to prepare for this. And, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're more of a realistic, you know, and, and you know that, you know, this is, you're going into, like you say, um, going into a loss here and you know it could be very big, are you going into just damage control Maybe some players prefer to pr- approach it that way. I, I I don't know. I always, didn't matter who, I always believed that it was going to be like the day when everything went right for us and everything went wrong, wrong for them. That's how I always approached it. And I think that's how the girls will do it as well. Like it is the context of this entire tournament, right? Like, and it feels almost like a tournament we're just trying to get to the end of to take stock. And mm-hmm. there's all the chat about the grand plan. And I think that like it's... Um, you can buy into the grand plan, right? Because I know, mm. like, we've talked about it again and we're not going to talk about it again this morning, but there is uh, elements of progress off the pitch that there is that that bit going on. Uh, but not much use to the 15 players who were on the pitch, potentially down in Cork, and the tries start to roll in. Like, Nicola Friday is not going to be gathering the troops under the post and reminded them about it's listen everything is fine the grand plan is coming down the track this is going to potentially be and I know what you're talking about 100% Greg McWilliams has talked about it we believe we can win and that has to be the chat clearly internally but equally it's going it's potentially and likely going to be a very tough day out for this group yeah absolutely and there's no there'll be no allusion to that like it will be very attritional You'll have like, you know, when you play against, um, if you're thinking of Wales and like some of their bigger players and like Italy, some of their bigger players, England is like a full team of that. You know, a full team of players that you need to be, um, you know, wary of. And, 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 you know, if you're thinking like, God, we have to get low on that player you have to do that for every single player uh, across the squad. But, like, there are some young, you know, if you look at the front row, for example, and, you know, to f- kind of hone in more on the rugby, like, mm. the scrum has been doing really well. So they have to kind of buy into that a little bit this weekend. You know, they've got, like, England are coming... H- Hannah Botterman, who's an unbelievable player, she's coming back from injury. Um, so she needs more game time. She won't be up to, like, you know, full match fitness... Connie Powell and Maud Muir, they're like, they're only, you know, they're freshies into the squad as well. Like, they're very experienced from their club and they've come in really well into the squad. But they are, you know, they're young English players as well. So that will be an area where Ireland will be like, OK, our scrum has been doing really well. Let's not let up. Let's do everything the same as we have been doing. We don't need to change anything. We just need to, even if it's just sticking your feet into the ground and just not letting them budge you. You you know that that that's what you're going to be thinking of and and um, when when it starts to if 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 the steamroll starts how do you yeah you're right how do you stop it how do you where do you find an area to go like okay score line zero zero don't care what are we looking at now what are we looking at now what are we looking at now that will be the chat like okay we didn't push wide enough we're too narrow we're missing tackles is the communication right like they're all the things that they'll be they're referring to technical elements under the post like um because as soon as you kind of run out of things to say or you start like getting annoyed at each other and the heads Mm. go down that's you know that that's that's when you've lost really yeah um score score scoreline or not is is there anything at all anything that the Irish players can take and benefit from this campaign if they're going to get hockeyed again right um, their scoring has been absolutely brutal this must be a really really tough mental experience for these players is there anything they can take going forward say this is our Nadir remember this moment bottle it because you can remember this and actually progress or is it just all terrible no of course they learn and like at the beginning of the tournament 
you know, the 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 question was always around like sevens, are the sevens gonna come in or blah blah blah. And that, that conversation always happens around, you know, around this time of year. And you know, the, the the management at the start of the tournament were like, no, we're happy with the squad we have. Like that's very valuable for that team. Now, the selections themselves haven't been as consistent as as I would have liked because the thing with the sevens is you lose consistency in your selection when they come in and out. So they've got the same squad. Obviously, injuries happen, but even despite injuries, they've kind of been shifting the squad a lot. So it would have been nicer to get a little bit more consistency. But look, at least, you know, the squad and the journey they're all on together is the same. That, of course, it will stand to them as long as, you know, they don't. And I don't I don't think this will happen. But, you know, after such a really tough experience, could they all just be like, I'm done, I'm out and, you know, and 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 turn away from from the from rugby? I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But of course, they learn like next year. They'll be better. They'll be a better group. They'll have learned a lot like, you know, and, and people are asking, like, oh, should we bring in the sevens now? Well, what 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 good would that do to this squad in terms of like? Uh, we were, we were, you know, we were here last year. Oh, but if there are some players who were taken out of it because they weren't trusted or whatever, then they've that that experience has been taken away from them. So, like, I know it's really hard, but at least they're going somewhere together, this squad group. So, I think that that is what we're going to have to take from it, and that that is that's the reality of where we're at now. Yeah. You do hope that, like, obviously, as they accumulate the experience, because that's always seen as a good thing, and the uh, game hours and all that, that it's just not a burning experience, like you've pointed to there, that yeah, ultimately damages yeah. um, a group of young players. Ta- talk to us a little bit about the like the line out specifically. I know you mentioned the strength of the scrum, the line out obviously faltering the last day, um, a big reliance on Nicola Friday there, and there's obviously a change um, in the back row with Dorothy Wall out injured, and uh, Brittany mm-hmm. Hogan comes in to replace. Is there an easy this is a stupid question there's not an easy fix is there a fix for that specifically this weekend it's such an important facet to win repetition repetition in in, in camp change nothing obviously what they have you know they obviously have to trust what they have they're just not nailing it. I don't think it's the fact that their 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 line outs aren't good enough. I think I always found frustrating when you know when a line out wasn't going right but you felt like you were so close to getting it right a coach might come in and change it all and and I really found that really frustrating I was like no we just need a, we just need a bit more time to like get everyone on the same page okay. so I think that they will have repped and repped and repped and repped and repped and repped and repped so that there's no doubt because it's hard because when you've got changes a whole line out can change from week to week and also from one minute to the next like when it when a when a a change might happen because of an injury or an unforeseen change or something, and a, and a player comes in. S- specifically, a back row because a back row needs to slot in. Like she could be a jumper or a lifter. She could go in the middle, go in the back, or go in the front. Like there's a lot of different options where where you could slot in, and you need to know every option in every in every part and every combination needs to be known. That's very difficult to achieve, even when you're full time professionals. That's difficult to get right when, you know, you're, you're on a, I don't know, they've got like a lot of time together, you know, during these weeks, but still repetition would just be my thing that they will, I, I hope they will have worked on this week so that like bang when it's called, you're meeting the ball at the top, no one has missed a beat, everyone knows where they're at and um, that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's what we'll see tomorrow and it'll be evident that they worked on that. Yeah, we keep talking about green shoots. Hopefully we'll see um, a few, whatever they may be, this weekend. It's quarter past two, Musgrave Park uh, tomorrow. Get yourself down, watch it on the TV. And uh, hopefully we have a little bit of something better to talk about when we're chatting, hopefully, uh, next week. Anna, thanks a million. No worries. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the snooker. Anna Capelis on the line there.